Hello, so we're going to talk about kinematics, which is the physics word for motion. Um, so we're studying motion, what causes motion, uh, change in position. So it's basically expanding on what we're talking about with the car traveling down the road at some velocity, 65 miles per hour, and how far does it travel in one hour. That's essentially where we're going to work on that kind of thing here. So we call it kinematics in one dimension, as you can imagine. Chapter three will be kinematics in two dimensions, which is a little different. So starting off, kinematics in one dimension. So physics, what we're going to be talking about in this class. We're going to start with kinematics. That's going to deal with the concepts that are needed to describe motion and then dynamics why is something moving? So we're going to talk about the effect that forces have on motion. And when you put those two things together, we call it mechanics. So this course is covering some of the topics from Newtonian mechanics. It sounds terribly impressive. Um, it's not really all that difficult. It is the way the world works. You experience all of this when you get in your car and travel somewhere or you ride the subway. Um, anytime you're moving around, you're, you're part of an object that's moving, it's, um, you, you experience this. All right, so first of all, I think maybe I told you this already, but physics can be a little bit obnoxious. And this is one of the ways. There's a special word called displacement. And displacement is going to be our word essentially for distance, but it's not distance. Why does this always happen? Um, it's not distance. It is the difference between your final position and your initial position. And so the classic example of this where displacement differs from distance traveled is me in a typical day. I wake up in my bed in the morning and then I get up and I go to work or I go to the store or I go somewhere else and I do something else and maybe during that day I've traveled many many miles but at night I'll go back to bed in essentially the same spot I was when I woke up in the morning so my displacement is zero even though the distance I traveled may be considerable. So that's what we're going to use for our word here in physics land. So when we use x, um, x will be our, our unit for displacement or our, our variable that we'll use for displacement. When we use x, that means displacement. And then it's the difference between the final position, which has no subscript next to it, and the initial position. So now you know the, the triangle thing is delta. It means change in. So that's the change in position equals the final position minus the initial position. Now you know. So if something started off two meters away from the wall and then you moved it and it was seven meters away from the wall then you'd say, oh, the displacement, the change in position of this object is going to be positive five meters. The final position was positive seven meters away from the wall, minus the initial position, positive two meters away from the wall, gave us positive five meters for the total displacement of that object. All right, so um, you can have other things that you can do. So if you changed where you called your zero position um, for whatever reason, and you say, all right, so this thing started off at position negative two meters and then moved to position positive five meters, then the displacement change in x, delta x, is five meters minus negative two meters and that would still give us positive seven meters as the displacement of that object. All right, so there's displacement. Um, from there, we're going to go to this other concept. Um, so speed and velocity are related to each other. Average speed is the distance traveled 
divided by the time required to cover that distance. So average speed is distance over time. You knew this already. So the units for speed in physics land will be meters per second. We won't generally do things in miles per hour or anything else because we're going to make our units all agree with each other. Remember we got in trouble when we had 65 miles per hour and we wanted to know how far we traveled in five minutes. So what we want to do in physics land is have just a general agreement. All right, everything's going to be meters, everything's going to be seconds, everything's going to be kilograms. And if we do that and we do it consistently, then we won't get in trouble and lose our $125 million Mars spacecraft thing. All right, so we have a jogger. Um, so how far does the jogger run in one and a half hours, which is 5,400 seconds, if you multiply that out, if his average speed is 2.22 meters per second? So we'll say, all right, so average speed is distance over time. Therefore, distance, if I want to get that by itself, is speed times time. So distance equals average speed times the time, 2.22 meter, meters per second times 5,400 seconds would give us 12,000 meters. Now, speed and velocity are two different concepts. We talked about this a little bit in chapter one. Um, so displacement is a vector quantity, change in position, because you can have a positive or negative change in position. Remember, we're talking about kinematics in one dimension right now for this chapter. One dimension can be purely the x-axis or it could be the y-axis and the y-axis we call the positive y-axis up and the negative y-axis down. So here we have a case where we're going to say, all right, so um, the displacement, it's a vector. Um, so maybe the displacement is positive something meters or negative something meters. And then um, time is just time. Time is a scalar quantity. So um, what do we have here? Andy Green in the car thrust SSC. I don't think that's Salem State College. Set a world record of 341.1 meters per second in 1997. To establish such a record, the driver makes two runs through the course, one in each direction, to nullify wind effects. From the data, determine the average velocity for each run. So we have a distance, positive 1,609 meters. So we're going to call this, um, typically we would do um, east as positive x-axis and west as negative x-axis. Um, so we'd say, all right, so the first run was positive 1,609 meters in a time of 4.740 seconds. And then the second run is negative because it traveled west. So negative 1,609 meters um, in a time of 4.695 seconds. So we can figure out the velocity for each of those. And the velocities are different. One is a positive velocity, positive meaning in the positive x-axis, and negative velocity meaning in the negative x-axis. Of course, we don't really care about velocity in this case. We're looking for speed. So we just take the average of those two values, the absolute value of those two values, and we would get their average speed. All right, so instantaneous velocity, you're driving down the road, you glance down at your speedometer, you're traveling at 55 miles per hour. That's your instantaneous speed. And if you happen to check a compass while you're at it, then maybe you're traveling at 55 miles per hour straight north, in which case you know your actual velocity. Um, this is a little nod to the world of um, as you would step into calculus, you would do limits and limit as delta t goes to zero. So if you're driving down the road and you say, all right, so over this past hour, we've traveled 100 miles, then you'd say I was traveling at 100 miles per hour. But um, that's kind of fast. Um, as you get a shorter and shorter sampling time, you get your instantaneous velocity. So in this case, 
Um, when you glance down at your speedometer, that's your instantaneous velocity. That's how fast you're moving right at that instant. Okay, now acceleration. This really isn't that hard a concept, but it starts to get a little bit weird because we can have positive acceleration and negative acceleration. So for right now, the notion of acceleration emerges when a change in velocity is combined with the time in which that change occurs. So anytime velocity changes, if you're not moving and then sometime in the future you are moving, you accelerated. You went, you, you had a change in velocity. So it's your final velocity minus your initial velocity over the time that it took to make that change in velocity. That's your acceleration. Acceleration has units, not of kilometers per hour per second, as in this clunky example, but what we're going to do is acceleration in meters per second squared. Meters per second per second. So after one second, the velocity of this car would change by 5 meters per second. After 2 seconds, it would change by 10 meters per second. So that's that's how velocity, or sorry, acceleration works. So acceleration, so in this example, we're given a final velocity of 13 meters per second, an initial velocity of 28 meters per second. So we get a negative number here in the numerator. That all took place in a time of 3 seconds. So we get a negative acceleration, negative 5 meters per second squared. This is slowing down. So the velocity vector is still pointing in the positive x-axis, but the acceleration vector is pointing in the negative x-axis. So it's decelerating. It's slowing down. All right, so um, you can see what happens. with you know, So the constant acceleration of negative 5 meters per second squared at the initial time, it's traveling at 28 meters per second. One second later, it's slowed down by 5 meters per second. So now it's only going at positive 23. After another one second, it's slowed down again by that same amount. Now it's only going at positive 18. All right, so um, those bold face symbols that you saw were there to indicate that we have vectors involved. Um, Doing that, it'd be a pain to write out all the time. So we're gonna go to just um, just our regular variables. So we have v for velocity, we have t for time, x for displacement, and a for acceleration. And we're gonna turn these into um, some equations that we'll use. We call them the equations of kinematics. I'm gonna jump ahead to the exciting part here. There are five kinematic variables. Two of them are velocity, but we have displacement, x, acceleration, a, final velocity, v, without a subscript, initial velocity, v sub zero, or sometimes we call it v naught, n-a-u-g-h-t, kind of old-fashioned, um, but that means the initial velocity, v naught, and then elapsed time, the time at which this event took place, is t. And so we take what we know with these equations and we put them together to come up with the four equations of kinematics. Let me jump to that and then we'll go back. All right, so the four equations of kinematics are v equals v naught plus a t. Another one, and you have to include both velocity values here, x equals one half v naught plus v times time. This is your average velocity. One half v naught plus v is your average velocity times time. So that equation is essentially the same as this equation if we leave out the acceleration piece. Um, distance equals velocity times time which we knew, we knew right at the very beginning. All right, um, another equation, v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax, and then finally x equals v naught t plus 1 half at squared. Um, you have these equations to use in order to solve problems, in order to answer questions. So um, 
guess we can go to this question. So there's a jet that's going to take off from an aircraft carrier. It's going to start with an initial velocity of 0 meters per second. It's going to accelerate at positive 31 meters per second squared in order to achieve a final velocity of positive 62 meters per second in order to lift off. So the question is to find its displacement. So what we know, what we were given is the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the final velocity. We're asked to find the displacement. What we were not told, and what we don't even care about here, is the time. How long, how much time elapsed for it to do this. So when we look at our equations of kinematics, we want to look for one of these equations that doesn't have time in it. I don't know what time is, and I'm not interested in finding out what the time is. So I look at my four equations, three of them have time in it, the other one doesn't. That's the equation I want to use. So when I use this equation, I will solve it. x equals v squared minus v naught squared divided by 2a. I took this equation and I want to get x all by itself so I subtracted v naught squared from both sides and then I divided both sides of the equation by 2a and x was all by itself on the right hand side. So when I did that I was able to figure out coincidentally it was 62 meters same as the final velocity but that's just coincidence 62 meters per second squared minus 0 squared gives me some really big number divided by 2 times 31 meters per second squared and that gives me positive 62 meters that's the length of the runway that the jet needed in order to achieve that velocity with that acceleration all right so when you want to apply the equations of kinematics you have this strategy you want to read the question and you want to read it again to make sure you understand what it's asking and what units you're looking for and all of that then you want to make a drawing the drawing helps you to understand what's going on so in this example we were given a drawing so we didn't have to do one ourselves but if i just gave you a word problem and said hey this car is that stopped at a red light and then the light turns green and it accelerates at a constant velocity, constant acceleration. Um, for that you might want a, a drawing so that you can kind of figure out what's going on. When you do that you'll decide which directions you're going to call positive and negative. That way if you're given a positive displacement and a negative acceleration you can make sure um, what you're going to do with those values. You want to write down the values that are given for any of the five kinematic variables. And then you want to figure out that you have at least three of them. And then you have another two. So there's five. You want to account for all five. You have to know at least three. Then when you look at the remaining two, one of them's what you're going to be looking for. And the other one you don't care about. That one that you don't care about will help you select the appropriate equation. When the motion is divided into segments, know that the final velocity of one segment is the initial velocity for the next. And then, weirdly enough, there can be two possible answers to a kinematics problem. What's the square root of 4? Well, maybe it's 2, but it could also be negative 2. So when you take the square root of 4, the answer is plus or minus 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4. So sometimes in kinematics problems you wind up taking the square root of a number and you just have to remember, okay, this could be either of these two answers. I have to step in. It's not just something you do on a calculator. It's something that you have to step in with your brains and make sure that you know what's going on. Alright, so we have the spacecraft traveling at a velocity of 3,250 meters per second and then the retro rockets are fired and it begins to slow down with an acceleration whose magnitude is 10 meters per second squared. See what they did there? In the words, they don't say negative 10 meters per second squared, so you have to step in and say, wait, it was slowing down, so that's negative 10. Alright, so it's kind of picky. Um, 
what is the velocity of the spacecraft when the displacement of the craft is positive 215 kilometers relative to the point that the retro rockets began firing so again this is like all the tricky stuff that you might see in a question where we're given a nice positive velocity so we have some sense of what's going on if we drew a picture we'd have the spacecraft traveling in the positive x-axis and then it's slowing down so we'd have the acceleration going in the negative x-axis and then we're like, wait, wait, give me meters, give me meters. Now it's kilometers, so I have to multiply this by 1,000 in order to get it into meters. So 215,000 meters, acceleration of negative 10 meters per second squared, final velocity, time, and uh, initial velocity were given. So now I want to find um, what's going on with the displacement. So I want to find... No, I was given the displacement. I want to find the velocity um, at some point later. And I wasn't given the time, and I don't care about the time. So again, I look at those equations. Same equation again. So there's my picture. They drew it backwards. I don't know what they're doing. Um, I want to find the final velocity. So plus or minus the square root. 3,250 squared plus 2ax, and I get my final answer, positive 2,500, or plus or minus 2,500. Then I have to step in and say, okay, so is it negative? No, it hadn't gone all the way to negative. It just slowed down. All right, we will talk about free fall next.